Hello everyone, it's Matt from Kuma Mods, back again with our review of the Kingaroon KP6. So, Kingaroon reached out to us a couple weeks ago now, it's it's actually been about two months, I want to say, so it's, it's a long overdue review, usually I want to try and have it within a, a week or so, but the more the merrier. Anyway, they reached out to us to uh, promote their new uh, KP6 model. And that's exactly what this is. Now, if this looks very familiar to you, that's because this, much like the Anycubic Photon and the uh, Elegu Mars and the Voxel Lab Proxima, they are all based off of Kellent printers. Or uh, I want to say it's like the Kellent Orbit, if I'm not mistaken, or D1, whatever the original one was. I'm not sure. Um, but basically, Kellant uh, supplies a lot of the bodies, at least, um, for a lot of printer manufacturers. And this is the same case here. So uh, what makes this printer so good or so bad? Well, to be in all honesty, I don't really have anything too bad to say about this. We'll, we'll get to it in a second. Um, but before this printer... The one that I used to boast about the most for cheap intro resin printers would be the Voxel Lab Proxima. And that's just because it was a newer updated printer and it just had everything that you needed to start printing. The only downside that it has was the, uh, the pop socket or ball joint style uh, spring loaded uh, leveling system that the Elegu Mars has and the uh, Anycubic Photon series has, or the, the Mono series. So that's something that I'm kind of getting away from. I don't specifically like those type of uh, leveling systems. And that's more or less because over time, in a very short period of time nonetheless, they tend to become unlevel or they just can't be leveled because... If you are here and you usually have your base plate like sitting that way, you're scraping off your prints. Usually, when that happens, you're putting a lot of force on the whole upper um, leveling system, and with those ball joints, they just don't they don't tend to keep their grip over time. No matter how big of a screw you put in there, it doesn't matter. It's going to fail very very quickly. With this system, we'll show you guys. This actually has a four-point leveling system, like some of the, the more expensive printers. So not only that, they also have crush washers behind that. So when you go ahead and you level this system, two and two, you basically never have to level it again. At least I've never had to re-level it so far. And we've done quite a lot of prints. and We've had quite a lot of failures on it. Totally my fault, but hey. You live and you learn, and that's we'll just move on from there, basically. Um, but basically, it's uh, it's been a fantastic printer so far. I have had almost no issues with the printer itself, except for one little thing. Now, with this printer, there is an active uh, carbon filtration system. Now, how good that really is, I haven't really tested, but... I will say that it's been sitting no more than two feet away from my face, and I have not smelt any of the resin that I have put in there. So uh, that's a very, very good sign. It's far superior to most of the stuff that uh, is out on the market that says that it has active far, uh, carbon filtration systems. And that's just more or less they just push, push the stuff out there and put it through a filtered screen, and that's about it. I'm talking about you, any to me. Anyway. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a fantastic, uh, printer so far. So the one, one or two downfalls, I guess you can take with this printer is the fact that while it does have an active filtration system, the fan is kind of loud, at least when you have the hood off, when you put the hood back on, it causes it to have like a, like a suction system, I guess. I, I don't really know how to explain it. Um, but basically it it quiets it down i don't know if that's a good thing like it's starving the fan or not or, or what but you can definitely notice a huge difference between when 
you don't have the uh, the hood on to compare to when you do have the hood on. So, um, but other than that, that's really about the only loud part of this entire uh, printer. Other than that, this the printing in general is dead quiet. Like it's probably got a twenty two oh eight or twenty two oh nine driver on it, um, and that's insanely quiet. Like you don't even hear it moving. Unless the fan is on, like you don't know that it's printing at all, and unless you're hearing the suction from the FEP or the fan on or whatnot, you really will not notice. And like I said, it's been sitting no more than two feet away from me, so it is a, a very very quiet system. So if you are looking for something that's insanely quiet, I do highly suggest this because. We do have that active filtration. It's got a uh, nice leveling system for the bed, and it is an insanely quiet printer. Now, the other downfall, which uh, it's kind of a downfall, but not. So for you guys that are Sheet2 Box lovers, and I specifically use Sheet2 Box, but I do have other programs that I can use, uh, this does not run a Sheet2 Box board in it, surprisingly enough. Uh, so it... You, it comes with, I believe it's 1.1.8 Shitu box. And that's because as, as version 1.9 rolled around, Shitu box ended up locking up all their boards and specifically only allowed it to work on their system. Otherwise, you'd have to work with Shitu box to allow the coating to go through on other slicers. Well, that's not the case with this. So, again, it's kind of a downfall, but not. We're as I always have the most up-to-date software for she 2 box because I do a lot of background work with she 2 box And uh, so my new slicers do not work with this system. So I specifically have to have the 1.1.8 that is supplied on the SD card to make this printer work uh, properly. Because if you were to set it up in a brand new slicer with 1.9, you can go ahead and slice a file and do everything that you normally would, but once you put that uh, USB drive on here, you go ahead and you uh, go to your folder, you will see that it will error out. The file will be there, it'll be properly named, but it will not print. It just does not recognize it because this is based on an older system. So uh, so for some of you that you know are not big fans of the whole she 2 box being locked down type thing, uh, you can probably utilize this printer on another program like Leechy uh, if you really, really want to. But, you know, that's completely up to you. I have not imported any profile for this, but it does use, uh, I believe, the .ctb file. So uh, as long as you have a printer that's set up that utilizes that, you might be able to get away with um, processing that through Leechy. Again, I haven't tried it myself, but you know, if you guys want to and you pick up this printer and you're more of a fan of Leechy, then by all means, go ahead and set one up and you know throw it out there for the community. That would be all the more better. Who knows? If I got some time to to get to it, maybe I'll contact uh, Leechy and you know get them to support this printer because I will say that this is the best budget printer out there to date. So um, just because of all the stuff that it includes, I really, really like the design of it too. It's kind of like a, if a Mars meets a Photon meets, you know, like a older Calent, because this, this is more close to the original Calent Orbit with the green top on it. And then Elegoo came along and added their touches, and basically the Kalen Orbit went away after that. So um, they bought like all the rights to to take care of it. But uh, yeah, other than that, it's it's been a great printer. So not really like any major downfalls with the printer, except for the slicer and that um, and the louder fan. But that's about it. Like you can obviously replace the fan if you really really were. Um, you know, had an issue with it, like you can probably upgrade it or, uh, you know, put a, a Noctua fan on it or something that's more silent, by all means, you can go ahead and play around with that. But uh, as, as it sits, I mean, you can't beat it. Uh, when I first got this printer, they were selling for $150, which was 
an amazing price. Like, there's nothing in that range that can even come close to this printer. And as of right now, making this video, uh, the price has jumped back up to 180 on at least Amazon, and that's USD. Um, so it's still a pretty good printer for the price. Like I said, you have you have a far superior leveling system. It is insanely quiet. Um, you're not locked down the sheet two box like uh, most of the other printers in its price range, um, and it does have an active carbon filtration system. So you kind of get that all in one package in a small unit. So if you're looking to, you know, get a printer that is a budget friendly printer, this by all means is your absolute best buy in my opinion. So, and I don't know who's next to take the reign over this, but uh, the last one, like I said, I always used to post about the Voxel Lab Proxima. And uh, that was a reigning champion for a little while for me. Um, and then this one came out on the market and it was just, it blew it all away. Like I said, it's, it's silent, active filtration, and that leveling system. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so those are all great. Um, now I did want to show off some of the prints. And we, we have been specifically printing um, the iPhone W, or uh, I'm sorry, the iPhone IF. 3120W, which is basically their white rigid resin. And I just did a video about that so you guys can kind of see a piggyback. Um, and I'll, I'll provide all the links to all the stuff that I printed off this printer. But uh, basically, one of the ones that I wanted to do was uh, a Captain Planet statue. Now, my apologies for the lighting. We're going to try and show this guy off. But uh, he is a three-part section, so his head his torso and his uh, bottom body, basically from his waist down, are all three different sections. And we basically just took some resin and used the UV light and pieced them all together. So now he is a whole person. So very, very nice. Um, we did like a flute because I kind of had like a, a musical instrument type thing going through my mind for a little bit. I'm not exactly sure why. Hey, it just kind of happens. Uh, and then I wanted to do some like kind of D&D miniatures or, or something in that range because I don't really show off a lot of stuff where it has like various ranges. So that's more or less why I wanted to print like a musical instrument, uh, a figurine, some miniatures in a way. They're not super miniatures. Uh, I want to say they're like 78 millimeter. So they're not like super small, but... Uh, you know, to some people, they are. And like I said, my my lighting with this white is just horrendous. So my apologies for it. But uh, these are really, really cool. Super high detail, flexible resin if you need. And then last but not least, we, uh, we made a replica of a Dreamcast VMU. And again, it's kind of hard to see that. But uh, that's basically what we were making with that. Um, and it's been a, a great printer so far, so uh, very, very good. I, uh, I absolutely enjoy it. So if you guys have the money to pick this up, I do highly suggest it because it is the best budget resin printer out there to date. So, um, But that's pretty much it. I'll leave links in the description down at, below. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them below as well. And uh, I will try and uh, read them and get back to you as fast as I possibly can. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Until next time, happy printing.